All right, howdy y'all, I'm uh, Austin Story, and I'm gonna be talking about how uh, uh, the, the team that I'm on, Doximity, managed to migrate a large application that is written in Vue with custom server-side rendering over to Nuxt. Uh, so, and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna talk about the background, a little bit about Doximity, why we wanted to move to Nuxt. I'll talk about the approach, this will be much higher level, and then uh, after that, we'll talk about what it looked like whenever we were done. Okay, so getting into the background. So a little bit about Doximity. Uh, we are one of those companies that have a 10-year-old Rails application. Uh, I happen to absolutely love Rails, but I also love Vue. And about three years ago, a little over three years ago, we started moving to Vue.js. Um, uh, historically, we'd had a whole bunch of backbone with jQuery and your standard like Rails server rendered stuff. And since then, um, we've moved uh, a good portion of all of our clin clinician-facing applications over to our custom-rendered Vue.js application. Uh, we actually have over um, 14,000 commits in the repo, and 80 contributors at Doximity have uh, added to the site. Uh, but what we noticed is that the more that we leaned into this, the more that we needed to uh, build out infrastructure for the Vue.js uh, server-side rendering that we had. You know, whenever, uh, and really, whenever you're talking about like your team, whenever you have developers working on things, you don't want them spending time on maintaining infrastructure, building out custom webpack stuff. Uh, although it's fun for the developer to geek out on, it doesn't help patients, uh, which is what our demographic is. Um, cool, so when we first started, we, uh, we built it out with uh, the Vue Hacker News clone. I don't know if anybody's seen this out there. Uh, it hasn't been maintained for a while, but thank God it existed whenever we first started, because it would have been very difficult for us to figure out all this stuff on our own. Uh, but whenever we, we started leaning into this, um, it, it came with having to understand everything related to server-side rendering of Vue.js applications. So you had to understand the server-side, you had to understand Vue and Vuex. You had to understand all the webpack, all the babble, all the, the client versus server-side. Um, then there's custom stuff for us for OpenID, for authentication. We use GraphQL, so you had to do Apollo, uh, Express, and Vue Router. And so a lot of feedback that I got from our team was that, you know, <laughs> It is just a lot to keep in your head whenever you're going in to manage all this stuff. So we wanted to remediate that. We wanted people to be able to spend as much time as possible developing things that are gonna help our customers, which end up being patients. So we started looking at Nux.js and through a series of discussions, we decided this was the best way to go. We looked at it whenever we first started building things out, but it was in the alpha beta stage um, and we, we couldn't rely that it was gonna be you know, something that lasted a long time. But at this point, you know, it's uh, significant in the community. Um, so a, a little bit about what is Nuxt. So whenever you have Vue, you, know, you put it on your, your browser and uh, you boot it up, you're able to interact with everything. Um, Server-side rendering is taking that on the server so that it generates string of text that's HTML that gets sent down to the browser just like you do whenever you hit a standard uh, regular server-based application. Nuxt abstracts a good portion of everything that you have to worry about whenever it comes to rendering a view-generated website to a client. So it takes care of the framework. There's a bunch of really sane conventions for where you put your pages and your components, your routes, all that sort of stuff. And it's also a really fantastic ecosystem. So there's a lot of plugins that you can lean into so that you don't have to build out your own stuff whenever you're getting going. Okay, cool, so approaching the migration. So, uh, this is one of my favorite quotes whenever I'm approaching anything hard. I think what would Ken Beck do? It says, for, you know, for each desired change, make the change easy. Warning, this may be hard. Then make the easy change. So the way that we did this, and I, this is from View Mastery, but this explains the structure of what a Nuxt application should look like whenever you boot it from the get-go. Uh, and the, the big areas there is that there are a, there's a standard place to put just about everything that you're going to do. So they have a standard for the way the store should look, they have a standard for the way assets should look, plugins and middleware, like all the things that you're going to do, they have an established convention for the majority of those things. So the first thing that we did was, I mean, there's a whole lot whenever you talk about 14,000 commits and 80 developers that we could have done. But the first thing was say, okay, what, what, can, what, what can I do to reduce the scope of this so that it's actually manageable in like you know, a month or maybe like six or eight weeks instead of many years? So I split it between, or you know, we split it between absolutely required and then things that we can do later that aren't quite as important to do immediately. And the things we identified as absolutely required were getting the directory structure set up exactly like Nuxt so that you know, in theory, whenever we pulled out our custom rendered stuff and we dropped in Nuxt config, it would just work. Uh, core libraries, those had to match up, so we had to get our view up to the same level as their view, same thing with Vuex, Vue Router. 
Uh, and then naming conventions, uh, we had, I don't know, probably 10 different aliases for like squiggly line thing, squiggly line source, double squiggly line. Uh, and then the last part, which is like the actual Nuxt bundle renderer that is going to do our server rendering. And then the post migration, there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. Just know that there's a whole lot that you don't actually have to do. Like we, didn't have, we, we decided to just not even touch changing Apollo. We're gonna maintain that on our own. Uh, the same thing with everything up to the point where Nuxt is rendering our application. We're not touching any of that stuff. We can deal with that later. We're gonna focus on the meat of the problem, which is getting our developers working more on patient-facing features. Cool, so then uh, we split it one further step was to reduce the ris risk of the change. You know, if we changed all of just the stuff on the left side, we did a spike on it on just a single page, it was like a 14,000 line diff, a big old change. Uh, there's a lot of risk with a 14,000 line diff, uh, one that I'm not uh, comfortable with taking. So what we did was we split this up into actually two separate parts. First is the prep and then the cutover phase. So the first is where we're getting all the directory structure. We can move all those pages into a pages directory before we cut over to Nuxt. You know, the same thing with our store. We can get all the naming conventions the exact same there. We can get our aliases the exact same. We can move over all of our assets and plugins and middleware. We can get all that so that like, it looks just like Nuxt, but it, it actually isn't Nuxt yet. Uh, and then after that, which is uh, the easy change, allegedly, hopefully, uh, is the Nuxt bundle render split up. So we ended up with three different parts here. You know, prep, you get everything ready, cut over, you switch it over so that Nuxt is doing your rendering, and then at the end, you take care of anything else that at the end of the day, may or may not still be important after you get everything migrated over. So three parts, next thing, now you gotta do the work. Cool, so the prep, I mean, this really isn't all that uh, eventful, but this is just an idea of like, the, the size of the diffs here, you know, whenever you're moving things over, you know, like we were able to split something that was, you know, 14,000 lines into a series of like small changes, so that uh, after we got through all of the prep of this, all of the commits, you know, all of the, the QA and tests and all that sort of stuff, so that like our final cutover branch, which, yeah, you know, cute tongue in cheat, uh, knocks the ultimate for anybody that likes uh, lambda calculus and stuff. But anyway, uh, it ended up being much, a much smaller change and something that we could live with. Um, cool, so that's it. At the end of the day, you know, we were able to move in place uh, with, you know, 80 developers still committing changes to our repository. We had a small team that moved everything over in place. Uh, and then it went from everybody being like this to more, you know, like this at the end. Cool, so that's this, uh, and uh, I got a couple more seconds here. This is something that's really helped us out. Um, anybody that's using Nuxt, you can tie into a hook here. Something that we ran into is a lot of uh, performance problems whenever, because we have so many pages that get rendered. Um, so this is something that we've kind of figured out where um, you can only boot like certain parts of your application. Uh, it's something we may end up like open sourcing or at least like contributing a blog post for. Uh, but essentially like if you hook, hook into that build templates, um, say you have like, you know, slash newsfeed, slash profiles, all that sort of stuff, you can just filter out so that like if you have a team that's only working on newsfeed, they'll only load up the newsfeed part. And it really substantially speeds up the amount of time, or the, the slows down, slow, anyway, it's faster to boot up for those teams. Cool, that's it. Thank you all so much.